Do you wanna make $700,000 a year as a CFO? Then you'll need to prove to your interviewers that you know Wall Street's three critical yet unspoken rules of corporate finance. Number one, you need to know how to cook the books, okay? Now I know what you're thinking, hold that thought for one second and we're gonna come right back to it. Number two, you should be doing nothing but asking questions and gathering data on your company, your competitors, and your industry. It's the only way you're gonna make the best decisions as a CFO. And number three, Know how the game is played, okay? Corporate finance is a game and Wall Street makes the rules. And if you're not playing by those rules, I can assure you're gonna have a short career and you're gonna be out, okay? Knowing and applying these three rules will give you immense credibility with the executive recruiters, the board members, and the CEO because they're gonna know that you just get it. It will prove to them beyond a reasonable doubt that you are CFO material through and through. And why is that? Because they know the exact same rules and they're playing by them as well, okay? You demonstrating to them that you know these rules will give them such a strong sense of confidence that you are the right choice for the role. My name is Nelson Alvarez. I'm a CPA and executive management consultant. My mission here in the C-suite is simple, to put you into the C-suite. And I do that by giving you real world actionable insights that are gonna open all the right doors for you, okay? No BS, I don't screw around. So if you wanna land that six figure role, I highly suggest that you take an hour out of your night to watch this training series to make sure that you are prepared for the role, okay? Now I hate wasting time, so let's dive right in. In this particular video, we're gonna start with rule number one, cooking the books. Now I do not mean that fraudulently, okay? There is nothing illegal about what I am teaching you here. However, if that was your first thought, that it was just simple nefarious accounting manipulation, then you've got a lot to learn as CFO because it's so much more than that. And again, there's nothing illegal here. Now, if you are not an accountant by profession, what you most likely did not know is that every single company has to cook or manipulate its books and numbers in order to adhere to the US generally accepted accounting principles. Now, when I say manipulate, I do not mean that in a negative context, okay? Manipulation is the natural adjustment to bring real world imperfect data into line with accounting language or standards, okay? It's no big deal and every company does this and 99% of them are doing it legally, ethically, and reasonably, okay? So I just wanna hammer that in, that when we talk about cooking the books, we do not mean that negatively. We mean that in the natural accounting sense and we're gonna go over that a lot more coming up. Now that you understand that real world data has to be in essence cooked or sculpted into accounting language, what exactly are we cooking and where do we start? Well, we start at the revenue number because the revenue number is subject to the highest degree of manipulation, both good and bad. As such, it comes under a lot of scrutiny from auditors, regulators, and Wall Street due to its simple pliability, okay? The revenue number you see on the income statement does not always objectively reflect reality. So why does the revenue number have to be cooked or manipulated? Shouldn't recording a sale be pretty straightforward? Well, no, recording revenue is not straightforward, okay? Recording revenue is actually highly complex as it involves a lot of judgments, assumptions, and estimates that management has to make about its business transactions in order to take them from the real world imperfect data into the accounting language, okay? It's not as straightforward as it seems as we're gonna find out. Now, why do revenue adjustments and estimates have to be made in the first place? Isn't there just a rule book we can follow step by step? Nope, there are no accounting rules that we can follow. There are only generally accepted accounting principles and guidelines, okay? There is no manual step by step accounting rule book. And the reason there is no rule book is that I want you to imagine uh, an accounting transaction for every single situation and every single circumstance that has ever existed and ever will exist, okay? It's just not reasonable. It would be millions of pages long and updated every five seconds. As such, it's just not reasonable to design an accounting system based on hypotheticals when decisions need to be made quickly and reasonably. This is why generally accepted accounting principles were developed to give CFOs high level accounting guidance that will generally tell them, generally and reasonably tell them how to record their business transactions regardless of industry or circumstance. Okay, now that you understand why there's no rule book and why high level accounting guidelines exist, what are some of the types of judgments and decisions that are actually going to affect the revenue number and the profit number? Well, remember we're on revenue, so let's start with that, okay? Current US GAAP guidelines say that a business transaction has to have been essentially complete 
in order for the company to record that revenue. Okay, essentially complete can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people, hence the subjectivity, right? So I think the best way to demonstrate this is with an example. Okay, let's put you in the CFO shoes and see what you would do in this situation that calls for some judgment, some decision to be made based on the circumstance. Here's the example. Here's the scenario I'm going to put you in, okay? You have a four month contract with a customer, okay? It is the end of month one, but also the last day of the year. So it's December 31st. Given it's the last day of the year, you're trying to record as much revenue as possible, okay? Now you had agreed to build a client based on every 25% of the project you essentially complete. So at this pace, we're looking at every one month, you're gonna essentially record 25% of the project being complete, okay? Here's the catch. Your project manager comes to you and tells you internally, from internal metrics, you were only 20% complete, okay? So you're 5% short of meeting that milestone, okay? So the question becomes, can I reasonably record and say that we are essentially 25% complete with the project, even though my internal manager says we're 20%? Okay, the customer doesn't know, not many people are gonna know, okay? These are the types of judgment calls you have to make. Okay, again, the judgment that needs to be made, can I reasonably record 25% of that revenue today? Well, if I were the CEO, here are the things that I would ask. I would ask, what is the 5% that is not complete that is holding us up, okay? What is that missing 5%? Because that's gonna judge whether we can essentially record it. If we can reasonably say we can essentially record 25% done. So it turns out that that five, missing 5% is actually just a part that is going to arrive tomorrow on January 1st. It should only take a few hours to install, okay? Now with that information, if I'm only a day away from essentially completing 25%, do you think it's okay to reasonably record that we are 25% done on December 31st? I would say yes. I would say it's completely reasonable to do so, and I would be recording that 25% of the revenue, okay, at the end of the year. Now, these types of judgment calls happen every single day, okay, in every single industry and in even more complicated circumstances than what I just described to you, okay? But the point I wanted to get across was where this subjectivity comes from and the reason that the books have to be cooked. Now, the next question we need to ask as CFO is, how do you know that your books are currently being cooked? How do you know they're being appropriately and reasonably cooked? Let's get into that. You'll know if your books are being appropriately cooked by applying the reasonability test, okay? The reasonability test applies just as much in law as it does in accounting. If you're ever in doubt about whether you should or should not record a business transaction, ask yourself, what would a reasonable person do in this situation? You can ask your staff accountants, you could ask your team, right? The point is that you're trying to ask some questions to gather data, okay? Is this a reasonable call to make? Sure, I may think it's reasonable, but I need to make sure that other people also think it is as well, okay? I need to test and challenge my assumptions on reasonability. That's how you make the best judgment accounting calls, and that's how you avoid trouble, okay? And as you just heard, I mentioned that we want to ask questions and gather data. And that's touching upon rule number two that I had mentioned at the beginning, right? That's a critical function of the CFO. And as you can see, rule two is starting to bleed into rule number one. In order to reasonably cook the books, you need to apply rule number two of asking a lot of questions and gathering a lot of data to make sure that it's done appropriately and reasonably. Now, I hope I've given you some good indication of the types of judgments and decisions that have to be made with respect to revenue accounting, okay? As you can see, it can get really complex. There's a lot of gray area. This is why critically thinking CFOs are paid so much money, okay? They're paid to reasonably apply rule number one, which is cooking the books, and they do that by asking lots of questions and gathering lots of data. That's how they keep their company out of accounting trouble, okay? Now we're gonna go a lot more into this and how all the rules bleed together over this training series. So you're gonna be a very well-rounded and well-prepared CFO candidate. So as CFO, what actionable steps should you take right away to ensure your books are appropriately and reasonably cooked? Okay, the first thing you're going to do as CFO is hire financial consultants who are experts in your particular industry. As mentioned above, revenue accounting is extremely complex. And if your internal accounting team is not reasonably and appropriately classifying revenue based on the customer transactions, you run the risk of either under-recording or over-recording revenues. You could get in a lot of trouble for this, and also you may be missing out 
on realizing a lot of revenue um, that you should be getting from these contracts if your team's not doing it appropriately. That's why you need these consultants to come in and look at your books. Now, what are the revenue consultants? What are these consultants actually going to do? Given that these consultants are industry experts, they're most likely going to have worked with your competitors, okay? And given that they have a lot of experience in your industry, they're going to know how to record particular transactions that may be a bit more complex for your internal accounting team. This is what makes them so valuable, okay? They're gonna squeeze out as much money as possible, as reasonably possible, out of your revenue contracts. This is why consultants are critical weapons in your tool chest, all right? If it costs $50,000 to bring in consultants for the year, and you can squeeze out another $500,000 in realizable revenue, it's probably the best investment you can make. It's an investment in you and in your company, and that's gonna instantly boost your financial metrics, okay? This shows that you're a seasoned, well-rounded CFO, who is capable of taking outside opinion and knows that not everybody has the answers. You need that outside perspective. Now, you may be asking, why can't I trust my internal accounting team to do all this? It, isn't, isn't it pretty simple? Isn't this their job? No, that's actually not the case. Their job is not to be experts in the particular industry, okay? You need to think of your internal accounting team like an engine, okay? And all they do is efficiently and effectively process business transactions, okay? They're an engine, they're a machine. That is what they are designed to do. You need to think of your consultants like your mechanics, okay? They're gonna make sure your internal accounting team's engine is hitting on all cylinders, right? So in a very real sense, what the consultants are gonna do is look at your procedures um, and the way you record transactions, okay? Based on their you know, knowledge of competitors in the industry, they're gonna advise you as a CFO, hey, this is what we're seeing in the industry. We think you can tweak this process to squeeze X amount of dollars out of your contracts, and it's totally, completely reasonable and acceptable for you to do this, okay? This is why they're so special. Just like a general, as advisors in the field, these are your advisors, okay? They're making sure you're doing everything possible to keep your company in top financial performance. I hope that makes sense to you why it's a necessity to have consultants on your payroll, all right? They bring in that fresh perspective that's gonna allow you to make sure that your company is reasonably and appropriately cooking the books, okay? Okay, and I wanna to touch on one more thing before we wrap up, and it's something I hear a lot from upper-level finance executives striving to be CFO. You know, they say, as CFO, aren't I expected to really be an expert in the accounting field and what I should know? And I'll say, no, that's not the case at all. And it's very striking when people say this, but it's not people's fault that they believe this, right? Because as you're going up the career ladder uh, in accounting or finance, and if you don't know the answer, you're always looking up you know, at someone above you for the answers. So it's natural to think that the people above you have all the right answers and that you're expected to know them as well. But that could not be further from the truth. I want to dispel that myth that you need to be an expert in accounting or finance to be CFO. That is not true at all. CFOs are leaders first. They are generalists. They are leaders. They ask questions and they gather data. That is their primary directive. That is what is going to land you the job. For this particular training, if you want to get hired as a CFO, again, in recap, you need to know the three rules. First is cooking the books, okay? We just discussed this, this entire video on the revenue side, and the next one, we're going to do the cost side, okay? Same principle applies, okay? Rule number two, ask questions, gather data. We started talking about this here, okay? And a lot of the time, we're using rule number two uh, to feed rule number one, right? If we want to make sure we're cooking the books appropriately and reasonably, we need to be asking questions and getting the data, okay? That's our assurance. In rule number three, we haven't discussed it much here, but we will in future videos, it's knowing how the game is played, okay? Corporate finance is a game, and there's rules to this game. It, only the top really knows it, okay? So we're gonna touch on that in some future videos. I want you to hang in there. Um, we'll see you in the next video on cooking the books cost side.